I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist. And while in a previous episode, we did the do while loop, in this episode, we're going to do the do until loop, which is another way of uh, doing loops in your programming. So without further ado, let's get to our do until loop in Microsoft Access. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so for this uh, discussion, we're going to uh, use the same file we've been using for many of our other um, many of our other demos. And uh, I'm going to look at this date demo table. It's just a simple table that has uh, 34,000 records in it uh, with an index and a field called date rep on it. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop that's going to go through that table, iterate through that table, and uh, we're going to put some uh, until conditions on it. And so um, I'm going to add the uh, module by going to the create ribbon, and I'll uh, click on module there, and then uh, and then that gives me a new module which I'm going to save right away here, and I'll save throughout. Um, throughout the programming and uh, but I'll put a, a name on it I'll call it our our do until loop module and uh, and that's going to give us a, a nice clean slate to work with so uh, that's going to get us started so I'll start a subroutine here and uh, very simple uh, one that we can just uh, we can just click the uh, little play button you see on the toolbar uh, because uh, we will, will not have any arguments in our uh, subroutine to start with, um, so that's the easiest way to run it when we want to. Uh, so this is kind of the simplest way to make a subroutine. Uh, it'll help to loop through the table, and we're just going to output the dates. And uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to do some basic uh, setup here. I'll I'll reference our database in a variable, and we'll we'll have a uh, record set variable as well and uh, and I'll just set our my database equal to our current database and uh, I like to uh, set our database to nothing at the end of the procedure um, to release resources there and uh, same thing uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, open the record set I'm just going to open it up with the default um, settings so that's going to actually make it uh, uh, Dynaset, uh, which is updatable, but we will not be updating uh, here. And uh, always make sure to close your record set when you're done. And uh, I like to set that variable equal to nothing as well. So now we've got the the setup and shutdown of our of our uh, uh, subroutine, and we're going to do a little loop. Now, pr previously we did the do while loop, and you can go back and check out that video. Um, and uh, that'll help you if you have a different set of conditions. Uh, but at this time around, we're going to do a do until loop. And we're going to do until rst.eof, which means until the record set is finished. So the cursor is going to be sitting on the very first record when we open it. And we're, we're going to say each time we go through uh, this loop, we're going to move to the next record. And so that's why you need to remember to always put your move next in your loop. Otherwise, your loop will go forever and sit on the first record. <laughs> and you'll have to, you know, shut it down using the task manager or something like that. Um, so always remember to put your move next in there when you're looping through your record set. Uh, but what we're going to do this time is we're going to say debug.print, and that's going to put the uh, information into the immediate window down below that you see there. And, uh, and uh, this is sort of a simple way of looping through. I don't remember the name of the field, so I'm going to go back and get it here. Uh, OK, it's called the date rep field. I forgot that. So I'll go back to our IDE window. And uh, we're going to put that in as the name of the uh, field that we want to output the data for. And, uh, and I'll concatenate that uh, with some text. I'll just say date or something like that. And we're good to go. Uh, so now what I can do is, like I said before, um, we can, you know, 
run this using the toolbar up above, uh, or we can type the name of the subroutine into the immediate window. And I'll also put some feedback uh, at the very end of our procedure there saying done, uh, so that when we execute our loop date subroutine, uh, it'll tell us that it's done. Uh, so uh, what we can do from here is we can go ahead and uh, hit that go button and uh, it's going to give us what we want to see. So there you can see it's kicked it off and our very simple procedure is just looping through the entire record set. And you'll see that it goes to uh, not responding, which is uh, it's pretty common for if a loop takes too long and you, and you don't have something in there. Um, I do have another video called uh, uh, it that covers using mod with do events. Um, so check out that video because it'll tell you how to avoid that um, uh, the not responding message. Going back to our code, uh, we can also put the a loop uh, or the until uh, part of the uh, statement at on the loop instead of the uh, instead of the do uh, at the very beginning and if we uh, if I delete all that output and I go back and I rerun it using loop until uh, we get the same result and uh, uh, there are some contexts and ways that it can be programmed that it will be different uh, especially if you have a lot of code in your uh, with variables changing and things like that um, it might exit at a different time between do and loop uh, if you put the until on either end of those uh, but in this case um, it's it gets the same result um, so there you can see it looped all the way to the end of the record set which was uh, backwards in time order so that the first one was uh, March 21st 2020 uh, make sure to, to remember uh, to put your rst.moveNext on there um, inside of your loop, as I mentioned before, and uh, that's going to uh, make sure that you go all the way to the end. Okay, and I will also add that uh, there are some other conditions that you might, um, you know, have as part of your do until. Um, so we could pass in an argument saying, uh, you know, loop through the dates, but stop at a particular um, counter row or something like that. And so uh, what we would do there is we can put our, our long integer stop at variable into the arguments at the top. And then we'll make a new uh, variable called uh, you know long record, which is uh, in long integer. And we'll set that to zero as I just did there. And then I'll, uh, I'll just say, you know, uh, our record counter is equal to the record counter plus one. So each time that the loop goes through, it's going to increase, um, increment the uh, long integer by one. And, uh, and then now we have another variable that we can look at, uh, and we can do something like, you know, loop until uh, the record is equal to the stop at that we mentioned, that we put into our arguments there. And so you can use this in various ways. Um, in a similar way to do while, um, you know, the do while loop. And each technique has its own uh, subtleties to it. Uh, so as you can see, if I run that, I put in the loop dates and I put 10 as our stop at. You'll see that it looped through the record set starting at the first record and ended at the 10th record. Uh, and that was uh, what we wanted our procedure to do. Um, now in this case, we could actually put the do until um, at the top, we could put the until part of it at the top, and we can rerun that, and that'll give us the same uh, the same output um, as before, but it's just a different way of doing it. Um, in some case, you some cases you might have other ways, or you might be loading your variables in certain ways, and you might prefer to do it at the put it on the loop part as opposed to the do part. And I would suggest that you do some practice with both kinds of loops uh, using a do until and uh, do while and uh, also for next, which I'll be covering very soon. And that's how you can do a do until loop with VBA in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do a do until loop in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, you can put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.